Hello and welcome to the Westvale Archives. My name is Jenna, I am an author illustrator from Newfoundland, Canada, and you may already know me from my art channel, Jenna Gets Creative. I'll have the link in the description and in the end card if you're interested in checking me out over there. So today I am going to present to you the first half of the photos I will be posting every day in June as part of Book Book Owl's June set of daily prompts. And then two more weeks from now I will post the other half. These will both be Monday bonus videos. So Book Book Owl's prompts for June are movies. They're books that have been adapted to either film or to a TV series and every prompt has two parts, a book title and a broader prompt. We're allowed to post either the actual book or something that we think fits into the prompt more broadly. And I wanted to hold myself to just the physical books I have here on my shelf in this province. I've got some in storage with my mother, I donated a bunch before I moved here, and I have a whole bunch as ebooks, so it was hard. I tried not to repeat anything, I have one repeat. Day one, Harry Potter magical books. I went literal with this. I've got The Deathly Hallows, I have Tales of Beetle the Bard, and I have this little music box, which works. Day two is Alice in Wonderland Books and Tea. So I have this picture here. I brought out my tea, Twining's Earl Grey, thank you very much. And I chose to pair this with book one of the Ouroboros Cycle by G.D. Falkson. This is a historical fiction somewhat steampunk. He's known for steampunk. I'm not really sure if I would call this one steampunk. The Ouroboros Cycle is an extended series where every three books is a self-contained story arc, but it's also a bigger series. I've only read the first three, the Veronis trilogy. This is the first book. This is where Babette becomes the vampire known as Veronis. And she's very, very prim and proper. It's Victorian. She's from France. She was engaged to a German prince. He died. She ends up with the vampires in more of a Slavic area. As the trilogy goes on, she ends up in England, all over the place. Seemed perfect for a books and tea topic. Day three, Emma, the classics. I don't have anything that you would put on like a high school reading list in the States and call it classics. No great American novels. But I do have Essie Hinton's The Outsiders and Anne Sewell's Black Beauty. My copy of Black Beauty is so old that the cover is no longer attached and it's very yellowed. This was my mom's copy when she was a kid. My copy of uh, The Outsiders is also pretty old. Mom passed that along to me at an age when we weren't yet reading that in school. And I did the Honors English program, so my teachers picked books that weren't on the typical reading list. But a lot of my friends ended up reading The Outsiders, and they found it odd that I'd already read it, <laughs> and that I enjoyed it. <laughs> and just to fill out the picture, I also snuck in my anthology of H.P. Lovecraft. But that is the one repeat. You will see it again much later, probably in the second video. Day 4, Percy Jackson, Myths, Gods, and Legends. I have three books pictured here. I have one of Kevin Hearn's Iron Druid Chronicles. I have Terry Pratchett's Small Gods, one of his Discworld novels, and I have Calculating God by Robert J. Sawyer. Of course, Discworld, I think we're all pretty familiar with what that is here on booktube, so I won't summarize that one. Calculating God is a science fiction novel where two alien species, who are aware of Earth and that there's an intelligent species there, are passing by along the way on their greater mission to pick up an earthling to come along for the ride. They come from a culture where science and religion go hand in hand, one cannot exist without the other, as opposed to being constantly in conflict like they are here. And they arrive on Earth, say, take me to your paleontologist. The human we meet is a paleontologist who happens to be dying of cancer. And they are going off in search of the literal god, oldest being in the universe. And they don't have any particular goal other than to meet this being and see if it will acknowledge them. And so they're, most of the book they spend explaining all of this to him and convincing him to leave his family behind and go with them in his last days, rather than just 
being miserable on Earth. Day 5, Lord of the Rings, Journeys and Adventures. I chose Green Rider, A Wizard of Earth Sea, and Stardust, and I decided to put in a little Hot Wheels model of the USS Enterprise and the backs of some playing cards. They're really beautiful artwork. This is the Name of the Wind themed regular playing cards. Art is by Shane Tyree. Green Rider is the first of Kristen Britton's novels. The Green Riders are the royal messengers of the realm. Kerrigan is just your basic merchant's daughter, and she crosses paths with a dying Green Rider, and she is begged to take his message and deliver it. And it turns out she's got some magical abilities and she actually becomes a Green Rider, but in the process, in this book, she helps unravel quite the treasonous plot. A Wizard of Earthsea is the first in Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea novels. These are fantasy novels set in Earthsea, which is a world separate from our own. The main character in this book is Ged, or Sparrowhawk, depending on how you know him. One of them is his birth name, one of them is his true name, his wizard name. His master on his home island, Oogion, sends him across the sea to Rok to join the mage school. While he's there, he does some bad things, he accidentally looses a shadow into the world, he's expelled, he comes back to Ogeon, he mopes for a bit, he learns a bit, he does some more loosing of bad things, and he ends up going all over Earthsea, running from what he did wrong until he finally learns to suck it up, turn around, and face it. Neil Gaiman's Stardust, I think most people know about it by now, whether you've read it or seen the film. Very good film ad adaptation, by the way, as far as film adaptations go. Tristan wants to go get the falling star he just saw to bring it back to his love, to propose to her before this other douchebag proposes to her. And as soon as he steps across the stone wall at the edge of their town, he's in another world, a magical world that you can't see from the mundane human side. And he finds that fallen star, but she is a person. Her name is Evane. And as they travel through the world trying to get back across the wall, they encounter all sorts of resistance, mostly from this witch that wants the star for her own evil purposes. And wouldn't you know it, the witch's enslaved servant girl is actually Tristan's mother, who sent him across the wall as a tiny baby to protect him. Day 6, Narnia, Books with Talking Animals. I could have posted a Narnia book, I do have my full seven books here, but I'll use them later. For this one, I'm using Robert Sawyer's Farseer and Mercedes Lackey's Reserved for the Cat, along with this tiger painting I did last year. Farseer is the first in the Quintaglio Ascension trilogy, and this is the story of an alien dinosaur-like species that go from Galileo to spacefaring in just two generations because they live on a moon that's in a degrading orbit that's eventually going to crash into the planet they're orbiting, and they gotta get out of there. Reserved for the Cat is one of Mercedes Lackey's Elemental Masters books where some people have varying degrees of skill in magic related to one of the Aristotle elements. In this case, the main character is a young ballerina who is escaping poverty in France. She's going over to England and she's going to borrow the reputation of a Russian ballerina. Her father is following her and helping her, but she doesn't know that because he's been trapped in the form of a cat. Day 7, Divergent Dystopian Novels. These are on my TBR, so I don't really know anything about them. One is Perfect Ruin by Lauren DeFestano. The back of the book says, You have all heard the warnings about the edge. We have been told its winds are a song that will hypnotize us. And by the time we awaken from that trance, it will be too late. I don't know much about this book at all, but Goodreads does say that among other things it's classified as dystopian, so I chose to put it in here, along with The Testing by Joelle Charbonneau. This is a Hunger Games-like true YA dystopian novel. The setting is the United Commonwealth, and obviously there's some testing of people. There's a whole bunch of questions and answers on the back of this book. Question 4. Is the testing safe? 
the United Commonwealth is not at liberty to discuss specific details related to the testing's various components. Sounds dangerous. Day 8. Beauty and the Beast, Books and Flowers. I decided to go quite literal with this one. Two Mercedes Lackey's novels based on the Beauty and the Beast story. The first one is The Fire Rose. This could be considered the very first book in the Elemental Masters series, but she wasn't writing the Elemental Masters series yet, so you won't see it branded that way. This is a very true to the original story, Beauty and the Beast, except she can interact with elemental magical creatures. The second book, Mercedes Lackey's Beauty and the Werewolf, when I bought it I thought it was an Elemental Masters, but as I was reading it, it didn't really fit. She does have some elemental magic abilities, but also he becomes a werewolf while the story is going on, and he's not so much of a beast, but he's learning how to deal with his werewolfness, and there's actually other villains, and they're not really a Gaston-like villain. It's a Beauty and the Beast in name and very loose inspiration. Day 9, Ready Player One, set in the future. I picked three books. First off is Jenna Moresi's Eve the Awakening. This was her debut novel and to date her only science fiction. This is set in the somewhat near future where humans are starting to evolve. The evolved humans are called Chimera. Our main character, Eve, is such a Chimera. And it just so happens that at the time that she's going off to university, at a place that's very, very much against chimeras, and she receives a whole lot of prejudice. There's aliens invading Earth, and only somebody like her, only a chimera, would be able to fight them off, and they've actually infiltrated the school and everything, so it's basically the story of her coming into her own as one of these new humans, these evolved chimeras, but also saving Earth. <laughs> The second book I put up is Robert J. Sawyer's Red Planet Blues. This is an expansion on his older novel, uh, Identity Theft. We are in a future where humans have colonized Mars to the extent that people are living in a domed habitat. There's a whole city in the domed habitat. It's very much a 1920s whodunit feel. The whole society there is based around a gold rush type thing happening, except it's not gold, it's fossils. There are fossils out there in the dust on Mars, and people who have enough money can transfer themselves into robotic bodies and slowly upgrade their bodies to be better and better and better. And we're dealing with, as the novelist title implies, identity theft on Mars during a fossil rush. The third book I put up is Kim Stanley Robinson's 2312. This is on my TBR list. I don't know too much about it, but it is Earth 300 years from now, or 300 years from probably when it was published. I get the impression it's a 2012 end of the world type situation, but wherever humans are now in 2312. Day 10, Jaws Under the Sea. I picked another Mercedes Lackey, surprise, surprise. So this is Home from the Sea. This is one of the Elemental Masters novels. We do get some of the recurring characters that come around sometimes, the ones who have their talking birds. But the main girl here is Marie Prothero, and she's grown up with just her father. She thinks that her mother and her other sibling are lost forever, and then she starts seeing magical beings in the water. She thinks she's crazy. Turns out she's actually half Selkie, and her mom and her sibling aren't gone. They're living in the water. Day 11, Practical Magic, Witches. I resisted the temptation to put up some more Harry Potter. As you can see, my lovely studio assistant Pebbles decided to help with this one. I picked Son of a Witch, The Thirteenth Sacrifice, and The Wizard of Cares. So The Wizard of Cares, I'm just reading the author names off of the covers in my picture here. The Wizard of Cares is by Mercedes Lackey, Eric Flint, and Dave Freer. This is an interesting space opera type novel where there's the lattice ship, they call it. It's this big lattice of a ship that every time it encounters and takes over another ship, it adds it to itself, puts it in the lattice, and it's 
it's really like a traveling circus that goes around from planet to planet to planet and gets in trouble. <laughs> Son of a Witch, this is the sequel to Wicked by Gregory Maguire. I have all of the books in this series. I don't know where my copy of Wicked went. If you're unfamiliar, if you haven't read the books, if you haven't seen the musical Wicked, if you haven't seen the Glee version of Wicked, this is the Wicked Witch's story in Oz. And The Thirteenth Sacrifice by Debbie Vigui. This is a witch hunt novel, so it's part of a series. Witch is in the name. Again, on my TBR, not entirely sure what it is yet. She stared down in terror at the bricks in the circle. The circle kept her safe. The circle protected her from what was outside. But only if it was unbroken. Day 12, Shadow Hunters, Good vs. Evil. I picked another Robert Sawyer novel. This is Quantum Knight. So at Quantum Knight, the characters are working on this philosopher's zombie thing where there are three quantum states of human consciousness. The vast majority of humanity are philosopher's zombies. If there are two balls that can be up or down, on, off, whatever, both their balls are off. They have no internal monologue. They are running through life on autopilot. And because of this, they don't necessarily have a conscience, but they're also not compelled to do anything that would require a conscience. You have the in-between state, one ball in superposition, and these are your sociopaths, your psychopaths. They have an internal monologue, they're very aware, but they don't have a conscience. And then you have the third state, both balls in the air, both in superposition. These are your good people who are aware and have a conscience. The main characters here, they're experimenting. They've come up with a way that they can shock a human so that you jump one position in this revolving door of how many balls you have in the air. So somebody who is a philosopher zombie can bump up one and become a psychopath, and then you can bump them up again and have them be aware and good, or you can bump them again back down to philosopher zombie. They're trying to figure out how best to shock the whole world at one time so that you have the fewest number of sociopaths. Day 13, Aragon Dragons. I picked In the Labyrinth of Drix, a memoir by Lady Trent. This is one of Marie Brennan's absolutely fascinating fictions where dinosaurs actually existed and this Lady Trent is observing like a zoologist. Day 14, Gone Girl Mystery Books. So this one's Illegal Alien by Robert J. Sawyer and A Study in Sable by Mercedes Lackey. Are you starting to notice a trend? These are some of my favorite authors, and these are the ones I made sure I brought early on. <laughs> Illegal Alien is an interesting whodunit sort of mystery. It's a science fiction, as all Robert Sawyer novels are. We've got an alien, a literal alien, seeking sanctuary, I guess, on Earth. A Study in Sable is yet another Elemental Masters book, and this one is a Holmes-style mystery. Finally, day 15, last one I'm doing in this video, the rest will be in part two. This is Maze Runner Fast-Paced Books. I couldn't think off the top of my head which books here behind me qualified as fast-paced, so I decided to get cheeky. I've got Sea Biscuit because resource, fast-paced, and Patrick Rothfuss, a slow regard of silent things because slow, it's definitely not fast-paced perfect. It's not fast-paced. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're having fun with Book Book Owl's June prompts as well. I will have my other 15 posted two Mondays from now in another bonus video. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some other videos up here on the left side of the screen, or you can go check out my art channel, Jenna Gets Creative. I upload writing and book topics here on the Westville Archive every Saturday and some Mondays. See you later!